Well, after doing a tutorial on how to make a low poly wood crate, uh, which you can find on my YouTube channel as well, and then uh, doing a tutorial on how to stack wood crates up um, and get them to be randomized, random sizes, but still all stacked together properly, you can follow that on my YouTube channel. I thought I would uh, then um, show an interesting way to go and replicate that final epic shot from Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, where the Ark is in a crate and it's being wheeled off in this massive warehouse with all these uh, crates stacked up and it's basically going to be lost forever uh, in this uh, military warehouse where, you know, who knows what is being kept. Um, so, you know, here's, here's my shot so far. It's pretty simple. You know, I've I've got some randomization going on. Um, you know, you'd have to again go back and do the tutorials, but of course the array modifiers come into play with this. And one of the things I've done to randomize the textures a little bit, I've done a random mat ID uh, between one and four. And then uh, what I have is, um, you know, material here that is a, a multi-sub material that's on each of the sets of crates, which are three of them and uh, I've got four um, shaders going in and I've done some variation on color on the original, um, you know, just the wood grain texture that I used. So I just used, um, you know, uh, uh, an OSL color correct on each one, kind of tinted some blue, um, pulled uh, brightness down. Um, this one he shifted to, uh, or sorry, uh, tinted to a little bit of red and I, you know, played with that and whatever. Okay, so, you know, it's just, Playing around, and again, they could, of course, have logos and text on them and whatever else. I didn't want to get too fancy. I just wanted to have fun with this. Um, so the camera's just on a spline, and it's just moving through it. But that isn't a, this isn't about that. It's how about I manage to get this all spread out. So if we look at the uh, setup here, we've got a lot of wood crates. Now, this was dead easy, absolutely dead easy. Once you do the tutorials on how to um, make the crate, um, which I only made one side of a crate um, and use the uh, uh, array and whatnot to make the others uh, and, uh, and stacking them up and everything was really simple. So it's one wood crate effectively and a couple of planes. So let's take a look at how I managed to make this set up now from that. So let's just take a look at this uh, in our perspective view. I'm just gonna go take all the armal lights and hide them off for now. And I guess just the camera we don't need and the line that's following we don't really need. So I've got this ground object again, just like I did in the previous tutorial on how to get the stacking going on. So it's just, it's just there um, for partly for the hit testing, uh, but also just as a ground. Now, the other thing I have are these three planes in here. So these three planes have been used, um, you know, in, in the previous tutorial uh, for being able to stack them, follow it there and you'll, uh, you'll get an understanding of, of how this works. But how did I get it to break up the way it's broken up? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the bottom one, the very first uh, one that's on the bottom. And I'm just going to isolate that for now. We're going to take a look at what's going on. Uh, so this is uh, a non-rendering object. I've, I've set it to uh, renderable off each of those uh, planes that are uh, helping with the stacking. Um, but I'm just going to go turn off the modifier stack for now. So what you're seeing then is, um, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, texture coordinates on here. And what I've got for a texture is this simple thing. So I've got a UV transfer. I'm moving, using the weave um, uh, to, to control this. So what the weave is doing for me, it's allowing me to have, you know, a, a you know, a checker pattern, like, you know, lines in it. The only problem with the weave, as you can see, it's not 100% white. Um, and I'm going to be using this for selections, for instance. So I've got that in there. Uh, I set the scale to one, and I'm playing around with the width of the, uh, the lines and whatnot. I've placed a UV, uh, an OSL UV transform into the UVW um, so that I can uh, size it back and forth. Now, to make sure that it is 100% going to create a selection and that it's white, I just threw a color correction node on here and just cranked up the contrast so that I've got black and white, okay? And that's an important one. The physical material here isn't necessary. I've only, it, well, 
you know, it's there just so I can visualize what I'm going to be getting as a result. Okay, so I've added it to the plane. Plane's not renderable. It doesn't need to be there. So back to our stack. So um, I'm just going to skip over the UVW map because you're going to see what's going on here. So if I check out volume select, what I've done is I've set volume select up to be selecting vertices and I'm using a texture map and the output of that is this um, color correction here. So I've dragged the output of that color correction in there and dropped it in like this. Okay, so now what I get is it selecting vertices. Uh, and that's what I was uh, meaning before. If you don't use that and use this one, you can end up with problems. You can see that not everything's 100% selected. It's kind of soft selected. Well, we don't want that. We want things just to be 100% selected or not selected. Next thing up is a delete mesh. So what you'll see now is, is that it's, you know, my, my stacks are going like this. Now you also notice they're all floating in the air. Okay. Reason being is, is each one of these planes um, that we're uh, working with above are actually, um, you can see if I grab the next one down, you know, it's got a conform modifier on there and they are, um, you know, uh, references up the stack here with the conform. Well, the problem is with the volume select on, it's passing a selection up to the conform. Now you could also in the conform modifier, I believe somewhere turn it on to use, yeah, on whole mesh you could do and not have to have the mesh select. But I'm doing the mesh select in here to uh, terminate the selection, okay? So you could use that button on each one and whatnot. So you'll now notice they've all dropped down, turn that off and they all start to float in the air again. Okay. So making sure conform works on everything. So I'll go back to that first plane. So here's where one of the real trick work, uh, tricks work. I'm just going to uh, turn off the delete so you can see what's happening. What I want to be able to do is take this plane and size it up and down. So I want to be able to change its length values and whatnot. But you'll notice that the rows and columns are scaling with it. It's not what I want to be able to do. I want to make this ground bigger um, and as big as I want. So if I drop those crates in there, you'll see what's going on right now. If I make this bigger, I get more and more crates spread out and I'd have to increase the length segs. But I want those uh, deletion, those rows and columns not to do this. Okay, I want it to retain the same rows and columns. So that's where this UVW map modifiers come in. So you can see it's just placed in the center here and it's just set to like 500, 500. Well, um, let's just go in and isolate that again. And what you'll see now is, is that the, um, the, the pattern on it is staying the same size when I go in and scale it. So you can see it's scaling along with it. Now you'll notice that there's areas with white that aren't being selected. Well, that's, you know, um, pretty straight up why that's happening. It's they're not hitting vertices. Okay, it's as simple as that. They're not actually selecting vertices, um, you know, to, to make that work. So you could go with, um, you know, the uh, volume select to do faces and try and select faces, but you could end, you can end up with other issues going on, but we'd have to make them wider, but it would work as well. You could probably find a uh, solution to get that to work. So what's neat now is, is that the, um, as this size is up and down, you'll see that it is kind of keeping those rows and columns all the time. They're randomly kind of getting picked because it's when they hit and line up with the, um, with the pattern, with the weave pattern correctly, which also means I can take the weave pattern and I can play around with the weave pattern here. So again, I'll just show that bottom layer of crates, um, you know, going on here. And, you know, we can easily go in and, um, you know, manipulate the, uh, the scale of this or how many rows or columns uh, are in this um, to be able to determine how many, uh, you know, uh, columns down the, uh, down the setup that we're looking for, which again is kind of cool that we can manipulate it this easily um, and be able to set it up. Of course, even the width of these can be uh, changed to determine, you know, how big those, um, you know, those, those columns are going to be. Now it's based on the, where the vertices are. So again, it's a little, 
you know, sort of touchy, sort of getting it just right. Um, and we don't want more and more vertices because for every vertex there is a wood crate, okay? But you've got a lot of control over it here to be able to set that all up and get that working. In the end, what it provides us with is basically unlimited wood crates. And, you know, we could even go in and spread them out more by changing the length segs and have them spread out in different spots. Now, of course, that's going to change where the aisles are down between them, um, you know, because again, it's going to change what's getting selected and where it's being selected. So the width, the length, all of that is now controlling just how big this is. We can size this up um, kind of infinitely and keep getting it to work. Now, I could, if I sized it up that big, I'm going to have to size up the amount of wood crates as well. Uh, in the segments, but again, we can have an unlimited amount of wood crates going. There you go, endless wood crates, forever going down to, uh, you know, paying homage to one of the greatest movies ever.